you won't find much traction in that demographic that's growing among Muslims, which is going to become a very large demographic. You won't find much traction for the idea that men with penises are women, for example. So there's a lot to be hopeful about. A lot of this woke crap, am I allowed to swear on this? Of yes. Yeah. So the bullshit that we're, has no traction in Muslim communities. Nor did the COVID mandates, by the way. Some of the biggest opponents of this whole mandate era it were- It doesn't in the Muslim community. That's right, yeah. Why not? Again, back to this point. When you're, when you're f tuned out of the bullshit, which is the data tracking, the, 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 the matrix illusion that we all live in, when you're just with people, none of this propaganda. You know, I just spent a whole mo month in a, in a mosque every single night because of Ramadan, uh, praying at not just the five daily prayers and not just the special Ramadan evening prayer, which is the Taraweeh prayer, but also the Tahajjud prayer, the night prayer. Every night, just leaving my phone at home, speaking to people. I can promise you out there in Muslim communities, the, the, the numbers you mentioned, whether it's in Pakistan, whether it's in Indonesia, there's because they are so tuned out of this propaganda, and that's the reason why, again, has years of ex history behind it, you know, not trusting Western propaganda and all that because of colonialism. There's a long history there, but because they're so tuned out in the real world where people are talking and mixing with each other. Define tuned out. Uh, not dependent for their perspective of uh, uh, around life on the very narrow um, uh, sources of information that we have ended up with in uh, in our discourse. And COVID demonstrated that in, in the way in which our sources of information were so minutely controlled. These are communities that have, because uh, let's take Pakistan as an example with vaccinations. Uh, as Vox reports, you can pull it up if you want, but the CIA in its hunt for bin Laden engaged in a fake hepatitis B vaccine program against children, using the cover of vaccines to try and take people's DNA against their will by deception, uh, looking for bin Laden. That got revealed, which as I say, it's on a Vox, V-O-X. That got blown up. The CIA had to apologize for it. But where you've got a history of abuse like that, nobody trusts the messaging in the first place to say take this shot or you're going to lose your job everyone ha has their starting point is you're all a bunch of liars so when you're tuned out in that way what you've got left you've got no money it's a developing world you've got no power what you've got is relationships <clears throat> and your relationships are the only thing that matter as anyone with a middle eastern background will know the idea of um, in Pakistan, it's called Safarish, but the idea of it's who you know, you have to know people, your family, your tribal members, even to get on in life, because the system doesn't work. Mm -hmm. The system has never worked for a long time. So it's the relationships that matter. Now, in that context, you've got no time for the bullshit and the propaganda. So there's no traction for this. Uh, these woke culture wars. There's absolutely zero traction but, but for like, it, vaccine but, but, mandates. But, but, but it has to be because somebody at the top shuts it down. Yeah. Because if the person at the top doesn't shut it down, then there can there can be traction. OK, you know, it, it, there, there's a part about. Uh, uh, so if you want to pull up these stats, I just send it to yeah. you with the whole percentage of um, uh, go a little lower, go a little lower, go a little lower, go keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, let me see if this is the link. Percentage of Muslims who support gay is this article that right. I found. Yeah, I was just gonna go. If you can go to that one, and it says by age. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you see. Okay, uh, I I didn't send you this link. I sent you a different link. I sent you the Pew Research link. Maybe I sent you the wrong link. Okay, let me send you this one. If you can pull this up, yeah. it says percentage of um, Muslims who strongly favor gay marriage. Mm. Okay, uh, eighteen to twenty nine. Yeah, forty nine percent. Yeah. 30 to 49, 38%. Where's that, in America? This is Pew Research. Yeah, but who's yeah. being, is it Muslims in America? So this is Muslims who strongly favor yeah. or favor gay marriage, yeah. okay? The percentage of Muslims who strongly favor or favor gay marriage who are ages, this is a table to promote margins errors and we'll come to the question. It doesn't say if it's America. So yeah. I'm, let's just assume it's America. I imagine it would be. 50 yeah. To yeah. 60, Those numbers don't 50 make to sense 64, 50 to 64 yeah. age, 11%. 65 plus is 2%. Yeah. How different is this in Muslim nations? Very different. G give us an idea. It would be the opposite. You'd be you'd be seeing the, the exact opposite. Right there, there on the chart. If you see, I mean, okay, just to survey, just survey which countries are, are legally allow in Muslim majority countries where this is a uh, a legal where the definition of marriage has changed from being between a man and a woman. In Muslim majority countries, I don't think there's any any really uh, traction for this idea. But I which think, which Muslim countries is gay marriage legal? I don't. I can't think of one. <laughs> I what do you think about that? I, I, look, for me, this is a human, a human issue. I don't think 
we should have to change the definition of what marriage is to have sympathy for people that have same-sex attraction. I think that there's a, there's a, a lot of crossing of lanes here, uh, which I think has been largely responsible for some of the mess we now find ourselves in where, where, where men are saying they're women. Uh, I think tradition is important. It needs to be respected and maintained. There's a reason in tradition, marriage is between a man and a woman. Uh, civil unions and civil partnerships are something else. I'm not uh, into, in any way, persecuting minority identities. Uh, my interest is to make sure that tradition as well is preserved and not tinkered with, because what we've seen of late with the woke culture wars, and said we'd come to the trans thing, and maybe we can go into it here now, is the absurdity of this all becomes apparent when you start, there's, tradition is there for a reason and the wisdom that underpins a lot of our traditional perspectives, in time you can begin seeing, especially as you become older and become a parent. And if you start playing with that um, wisdom, as I say, the absurdity becomes apparent now. There is no, uh, there is no reason other than a respect for tradition and, and a recognition of reality, which is what tradition is, I believe, and the wisdom that is underpinning tradition is based on. Um, there is no reason other than that to object to a lot of this madness. The, the reason I object to this madness is I say that this, we as human beings have existed here on this planet for so many thousands of years, and along you come and think that you can, that you, you've suddenly found an answer to these questions, and the answer is that I can identify however I want. I, I, sorry, but I don't think that you have the accumulated wisdom of generations of human beings on this planet. Um, people that have had intersex identities, people that have, have had trans identities, people that have had same-sex attraction have always existed in these societies. And if you go to um, Pakistan as an example here, if you go to Lahore, and if you go to the Badshai Masjid, which is one of the big, most beautiful mosques in Lahore, around that Badshai Masjid was the traditional red light district of the Mughal emperors. Uh, because a lot of the concubines and others would live around the court. And the in Pakistan, there's a very old tradition of um, men that would come to weddings and dance, and they would be dressed up as women. And in Urdu, the, the common parlance for this is kusre. Yeah? And uh, it's not, uh, you know, the, the idea of the trans identity in a traditional Muslim society is not... Um, it's not alien. But what, what never happened was that you take that phenomenon, which was they weren't, you know, it, of co course there are challenges with uh, how they're treated and that needs to uh, improve in every case. But what never happened was you take that identity which has existed there for a long time and now you want to start tinkering with tradition by changing uh, the norms and the customs and the legislation upon which those, uh, that, that those norms and customs lead to by saying that I'm going to now change the definition of marriage. So they, they were there and they've always been there. But there's a reason that, that tradition has led to this idea that marriage is, is between man and woman. I think, and I think that's how it should stay. That, it's also a slippery s slope, right? Because uh, you said that's how I think it should stay, yeah. is what you're saying. Marriage, okay. marriage, yeah. Marriage yeah. between a man and a woman. Yeah. That's how it should stay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 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 today you'll hear uh, guys coming out, and you know we talked about this with Tate. Andrew Tate says, look at Christians. You know, they're compromising their values and principles. He says, you know why I'm a Muslim? Because they don't compromise their values and principles. And he's, he's got a big audience, and his audience is who? 16 to 35 years old, yeah. okay, which is the audience that is typically afraid, angry, disappointed, heartbroken, moldable, shapeable, recruitable. His audience is the audience that is a shapeable audience, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the audience the U.S. government wants to have because – the sooner you get to them through educational system, whatever, maybe you have them for the rest of your life, and you already know how they're going to be voting for you, you got them for yeah. the most part, right? Yeah. Okay. What, what, why do you think uh, the, the Christian religion is caving in where they're sitting there and saying, well, you know what? It's okay. You know, yeah. let's just compliment. It's okay. And, and I know you don't have the answer to it. It's not like it's like I'll give you I'm looking answer. for definite, but I want an I'll answer give, of your I'll opinion. Give you, I'll yeah. give you an answer. Um, and, and by the way, do you think it is a mistake clergy's making? Do you think it is a mistake the Christian church is making? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so an answer. is, uh, and, and before I give the an answer that I'm saying, to make it clear, I'm married to an American who was raised in Catholic school. My mother-in-law is a practicing Catholic who visits church every Sunday uh, and for all the uh, occasions such as Christmas and what have you. Um, 
and so I am familiar on a, in a family sense with um, Catholicism and my remarks are in no way meant in any way to disparage any faith tradition. Uh, but an answer to your question, I believe, is back, it, got, it comes back to the nature of uh, in institutions, in this case, clergy. When you have, as I say, every institution becomes corrupted and it drifts to more and more power. We saw that in the church. So the paedophilia scandal isn't confined to Epstein. It existed in the church as well. Now, what was Epstein? So Whitney Webb's written a book, One Nation Under Blackmail. It's a two-volume book worth having a look at. Um, I interviewed her for my The Radical Show, um, which uh, basically we had a whole season and then um, <laughs> it was on Odyssey. And Odyssey's parent company was Library. And the SEC, um, the Securities and Exchange Commission, under Gary Gensler, enforced against Library while not enforcing against uh, FTX. And so Library had to shut down. And so... Uh, uh, Odyssey, the platform still exists, but Radical, the show, couldn't carry on. But we had Whitney Webb on that show, and, and that's an example. One Nation Under Blackmail's her book. And it, it goes into how the entire Epstein operation was for the purposes of acquiring compromat on senior political leaders so that once you have that compromat or compromising material, you can have them do your bidding at risk of you exposing what you know about them if they don't. So take what we know about Epstein and one of his um, former handlers, is, it's all there in the press. In fact, in the British newspaper, The Sun, you've got an interview with one of them saying, I was Epstein's Mossad handler. And the reason we were doing this was to try and force politicians with the compromise we had to do our bidding. But that's how political blackmail works. So to your question, what happened in the church? If you've got a whole bunch of shit on a whole bunch of priests doing a whole bunch of crap with kids, you can have them do your bidding. And you can hijack the institution from within. In the UK with the Church of England, um, I think the man's um, Welby, uh, the head of the Church of England in the UK has recently come out and said the same thing. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. This trans stuff, this gay stuff, it's all fine. So the question becomes, if you can corrupt the institution from the top and the guidance itself is saying this is all fine, or in the case of the Catholic Church, you've got priests who are uh, disabled from doing much against it because themselves are compromised, the institution itself becomes disabled. It is unable to respond. And again, the advantage of, an, of a li more libertarian approach to a direct relationship with the source or Allah, again, we've defined what we mean by the word Allah. This is not a, you know, a Muslim only thing. Um, if you have a direct relationship with Allah or the source, uh, you can always outflank the attempt to hijack any given institution because your uh, your faith tradition doesn't rely on that institution for guidance in the first place. That's, so, so, imagine. Let me ask you a question. So, what? Uh, I, I agree. The whole trends. It's 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 getting crazy. They're growing by the day. It's getting to, to me. It's getting out of control. Why do you think such a small minority group is is getting like protected and probably you can't like if anybody talks negative against them, you're canceled. You're done. You're finished. How are they getting this much power? Yeah. Like how is it? Well, so this is deliberate. Uh, these culture wars are being stoked on purpose to avoid us having these conversations about one nation under blackmail, about globalism, about technocracy, about the, the uh, attempts that are still undergoing right now to securitize the entire planet and, and put us under this dragnet, uh, this technocratic uh, dragnet where we are all digital slaves. Uh, and that should be the most important topic right now. The World Health Organization is currently, as we speak, passing amendments to the international health regulations, amendments. Those amendments to the international health regulations stipulate that the head of the World Health Organization, Tudros, who I believe, by the way, uh, there is also some questionable footage of in various private uh, scenarios. Now, Tudros, who's the head of the World Health Organization, through these amendments, which will pass without a vote because all of us, our countries, are signatories to the World Health Organization, so the amendments to the international health regulations don't need a vote. Once those amendments pass, the World Health Organization can declare a global health emergency and impose all of their measures from a from on uh, uh, on top centrally, mm -hmm. and they won't need the government's uh, 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 cooperation to do so. So we've got efforts afoot right now as we speak to securitize our uh, health policy around the world and synchronize it all in one globalist technocratic uh, tyranny. And meanwhile. 
uh, we are fighting over what a woman is. And I think that that's being deliberately stoked so that we're looking over here and not looking up. Like diversion I, tactic. like Look left and right, don't yeah. look up. And I, I obviously you, you have to address it because what somebody is. going into a female changing room and you, or a prison where as a rapist who suddenly identifies as a woman and gets put into a female wing, you have to address it because it's a clear and immediate problem. Mm -hmm. But while you're addressing it, this is all going on up here. Wow. So I often say to people, Look up. We have to look up and understand what's going on. This is being deliberately funded. Back to the money point. These culture wars are being stoked and funded on purpose. The rise of this <coughs> Bud Light character. Yeah, Notice it happened after they met Biden. Yep. Right? It's all planned. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.